Hello Algebra 1A students. This is the helpful video on annotating word problems. So here I have the printout that I gave to you earlier today in class and these are the steps of annotation. First you need to read the problem, then underline, number, and level all questions and tasks. So some problems have one question, some qu problems have lots of questions. Um, Three is plan. So ask yourself these questions. What do I need to do to solve this problem? Do I need to write an expression or an equation? Do I need to do an operation? Do I need to make a graph? And then what information do I need to do this? After you've kind of figured out your plan, go for it. Solve your plan. And then when you're finished, ask yourself, what is the problem asking me for? And have I answered this? And do I have the correct units? OK? So we're going to do two examples together um, on here. And hopefully that'll help you out a little bit. So, here's our first one. Step one of annotation says, read the problem. So, Miguel and Ruben decided to bake a monster cake that is three times the size of a standard cake. If a standard cake recipe calls for two and a half cups of flour, how much flour will they need for their monster cake? Do you think they will get sick when they eat the whole cake? Okay, that's step one. Step two says to underline number and level each question. So how much flour will they need for their monster cake? That is question one. Do you think they will get sick when they eat the whole cake? That is question two. Okay, so I have two questions to answer in this problem. Now, as far as what level, so how much flour will they need for their monster cake? If we look at our table of levels of questioning here, um, level one is factual, Number two is goes beyond factual and makes you reason. Number three is asks you to think big. So here's some examples on the side. Well, when it asks you how much flour they will need, you're going to get an answer like well, seven cups of flour, you know, cups of flour. You don't need a whole lot of reasoning behind that. So this really, this question is level one. Okay. Now, number two, do you think they will get sick when they eat the whole cake? Well, that's definitely not going to do, be a number one, right? Because the answer isn't this factual number. It's going to be probably either a two or a three. Well, number two makes you reason, right? You kind of need some information from the problem to know if they're going to get sick. And then three asks you to think big. So do people always buy something if they have money for it? And a question for level three for this problem would be like, why do people make lots of cake? Okay, things that aren't re really too, you don't need the problem to necessarily answer. So I would say that question two is actually a level two question. Okay, so step three of annotation is to plan. So let's look at number one. We're going to solve number one first, one at a time. So how much flour will they need for their monster cake? Well, what am I going to need to do here? Am I going to need to write an expression or do an operation? Well, I know that they have two and a half, half cups of flour for one, and I'm going to need three times that amount. Ooh, so you know what? I'm going to do an operation. I'm going to do three times the normal amount of flour to find how much flour it needs for a cake three times the size. Okay. Do I have the information I need to do that? Yes, I do. I have two and a half cups of flour. Okay. So now I have planned what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to actually do it. So three times two and one half. I'm going to kind of break this up. So three times two is six. Three times one half is one and a half. So if we add six and one and a half, we'll get seven and a half. Okay. So I've solved, but I haven't asked myself, what is the problem asking me for? How much flour will they need? Okay. I have answered that. And have I answered it? Yes, but I also need to put my units. So this is seven and a half cups of flour. And I'm going to label that the answer to question one. Okay, I might put a box around it just so I know. So I've done question one. Question two, do you think they will get sick when they eat the whole cake? I have to go back to step three and plan. What do I need? What do, what do I need to do to solve this problem? Well, I have to look at how much cake they're going to do and then think in my brain about, oh God, that's a lot of cake. Would I get sick kind of stuff? And then solve. Yeah, I think they will get sick. Okay, yes. But have I answered it in the correct way? I need to give some kind of reasoning for this. So I'm going to say yes, because 
seven and a half cups of flour is a lot of flour. Okay. Can you imagine seven and a half cups of flour plus sugar plus frosting plus all that stuff? They're going to get sick. So I have answered number two, and I have all the correct answer. I have answered both questions one and two. I'm done with the problem. Okay. Let's try one more together. So my first um, step is always to read the problem. Justin Bieber loves squirrels. Justin is raising squirrels. According to PETA, he can have, he can put three squirrels in each cage. He has five more squirrels than twice the number of squirrels. How many, he has five more cages than twice the number of squirrels. How many cages does he have if he has five squirrels? Does he meet PETA standards? Actually, 